Hello and welcome to Runkel of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkel. I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. So one question I get asked a fair bit is, I have a court appearance, what should I wear? And if you've got a lawyer, what you should wear is talk to your lawyer, they'll tell you what, what sort of things you should wear. Because of course your situation may vary. But if you don't have a lawyer, some sort of general guidelines. Uh, the first is people say, should I go buy a suit or should I borrow a suit? And in most cases, I'd say no. Uh, the reason why is that if you're wearing a newly purchased suit and it's not something you're in the habit of wearing, you're probably going to feel uncomfortable in it and that will show. Uh, that's going to be double if that suit is one you've borrowed and that doesn't fit you. Uh, a borrowed suit often can look fairly ridiculous if it's substantially too small or too large. You see people sometimes at the courthouse and they're swimming in a suit they're clearly not comfortable and it makes them look nervous and kind of sketchy, which may in turn make them look like they're maybe not trustworthy when they're testifying on the stand. Uh, people are going to be watching you and judging your mannerisms and so forth. So you want to be comfortable in your own skin and in what you're wearing because it's already uncomfortable enough to be in a courtroom. You don't need to make it any worse by wearing something that isn't really something that you normally would wear. Um, there may be exceptions to that. If you're facing, you know, a murder charge, it might make some sense to show up in a suit rather than something else. Uh, generally, what I'd suggest is to sort of dress nicely for whatever sort of your situation is. You know, if you're a tradesperson, dress nicely for a tradesperson. If you work in an office and you've got a lot of dress shirts and ties, maybe a dress shirt and tie. But think about it in terms of what you might wear uh, to a job interview or maybe even to something like a funeral. Uh, so long as you're not sort of wearing specifically funeral attire, um, no black veil, nothing along those lines. But uh, this is a general, good general rule. If you don't own like a button up shirt, it might be worth buying one of those. But uh, these are sort of just general principles. What you're trying to communicate to the court is that you respect the court and that you're taking this seriously. You don't want to be looking like you are not giving the court its sort of appropriate due. The other things to avoid in sort of general categories. First, uh, right now I'm wearing a shirt, Doug Stanhope Celebrity Death Pool. I like this shirt. I, I won it as part of their contest. I would never wear this to court either, you know, as an accused person or as a as a witness, I hope never to be an accused person, but this is not good court attire uh, because A, first you should avoid any sort of printed text or images, and B, if you must wear something with printed text or images, you should be very careful that it's not something that might offend or might communicate a message that you don't want to communicate. So some examples of things that are definitely on the no list is anything that sort of seems to celebrate criminal activity. So crooks and castles or cocaine and caviar are not great brands. Uh, when Sons of Anarchy was popular, people would show up in Sons of Anarchy gear. And your judge might not be watching the show and might not necessarily be in on the reference, at which point think about how that looks. Maybe not the best. Marijuana is legal, but I still wouldn't want to show up wearing a big marijuana leaf shirt. Uh, similarly, sentiments like fuck the police which I've seen people wear to the courthouse, not a great move because your judge is probably not going to be on board with that. Uh, especially not if you are trying to plead out something like an assault on a peace officer. That is not a great choice. So don't avoid, if at all possible, any sort of printed text or images or anything else. Another one I've seen is people attending court wearing clothing that says things like, only God can judge me which perfectly fine as a sentiment generally, but when you're actually in front of a judge, the judge may take that in a little bit of a different kind of fashion. That's kind of a confrontational statement when you're talking about a judge whose job it is to judge you. It's literally in the name, so maybe not the best choice. Uh, also not a great idea to wear anything sort of terribly exotic or unusual. I've seen people wearing uh, little angel wings. I've seen people show up with cat ears. I've seen people show up with like a sew-on tail. At least I hope it was sew-on. 
these are not great choices. A courtroom is a conservative place. Uh, you don't want to be doing anything sort of strange or unusual because people may have reactions that aren't what you want. Another thing to avoid is any style of dress that is sort of provocative or that shows off your body. Courtroom isn't really a place for it. It's unlikely to win you any favor with the court and it may well annoy the court. They may not call you out for the, your fashion choices there, but they may silently be sort of critical. And that's not a place you want to be, either as a witness or as the accused. You don't want the court to be sort of annoyed at you before they've even heard anybody open their mouth to talk about what's happening. So avoid that, it's, it's not worth it. Again, a courtroom is a very conservative place. It's a place to be you know, dressed up. And again, think of a funeral or think of a job interview or the appropriate things for those kinds of settings. A courtroom is very much the same sort of thing. Uh, but once again, it's not necessary that you wear a suit. It's not necessary that you wear a tie necessarily. I mean, these things, if you have them, great, absolutely, by all means, throw it on and you're good to go. But if you don't, just think of sort of how you can dress uh, in a conservative, in a uh, understated, but very polite, very respectful kind of way. It's uh, not too difficult, but if you go to the courthouse on any given day, you will see people who are quite flagrantly breaking these sort of general guidelines, and I don't think it does them any favors. Thank you for watching. I hope this is information that you don't really have occasion to use, but if you do, it might prove useful. So I hope it's informative. Please like, share, and subscribe this video if it is. Uh, I also want to thank my Patreon supporters at the $50 level, DMO, People of Canada, Sir Daniel Wicks of Alberta, Canada's National Firearms Association, and Frank Chong. At the $20 level, uh, Cameron Johnson, Kevin Fleet, and Dale Nesbitt. And at the $10 level, my buddy Keith, Process Eng, Stephen Larson, General Counsel of the CCFR, John Robinson, TR, Roy Haddock, Freckles Dak, Jean Alexandre Tessier, Sir Goat, Sites and Arms Limited, Chava Hollow, Peter H., Craig Kwan, Akin Coxall, North Central Process Service, Toys Are for Boys, Ian Vaughn, Milan Drekic, Terence Griffiths, Doug Thompson, Mark D., Brad Crooker, Jason Harrington, Lee Kiso, Mark Stout, Michelle Stotzel, Scott Sweetman, Mike Rhodes, DF, Stacey Cartmel, Tactical Advantage TV Canada, Ian S., Dave Leslie, Juan, Donald Duncan, Darren Duell, Sean Crane, Ian Hutchinson, Rory, Travis, BC Bushcraft Leather, John Singarty, Misa Komarevich, All Systems Go, David Moga, Ian Hedgedanik, Hello from Venezuela, Taylor Delnea, Raj Guzman, uh, Matthew Nesbitt, and Conway Yuri. Uh, nobody uh, provided anything. This uh, I won this shirt fair and square, so there's no paid promotion in this. But uh, thank you, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge. See you next time.